What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. E3 2014 just concluded day one. Now day one is when the uh, companies Sony, Microsoft, EA, and Ubisoft go on stage and show you their offerings and then you get the rest of the week to go around and play the games that are available on the floor. So I saw Microsoft show this, this morning and it was really great. I enjoyed seeing a lot of this stuff. I think the one thing uh, with the Microsoft showing that uh, intrigued me the most is the Halo Master Chief Collection which includes Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4. It also includes every level, every multiplayer map uh, full 1080p 60 frames per second and it includes six revamped uh, Xbox One versions of maps from Halo 2. I don't know if they're going to do more than that. It is only $60. That right there really intrigued me more so than anything else. A lot of the, the stuff that was being shown for Microsoft was really CGI heavy for me and when you show a lot of CGI you're letting people know hey look the game is in development but you can't take this CG as any representation of what the actual game is going to be like so we gotten used to that I'm kinda used to seeing that myself and so when I see the CG of course I'm excited that the game is in development but it's a little underwhelming knowing that this you know this full motion CG render that you created uh, you could have done this three days ago or you could have done this a week ago just to you know pacify the audience Sony, on the other hand, uh, did a show that really kind of got my attention, showed a lot of gameplay. Some of the stuff was CG, but a majority of it was actual gameplay. Games like Mortal Kombat X-10 showed actual gameplay, and it was the first time that we were able to see it. I'm going to go through the PlayStation list, of, uh, Sony list, that is, of what they uh, you know showed during their E3 on stage time 90 minutes, and the stuff that I thought was really uh, exciting. Now, uh, when Sony took the stage, they started off, they hit the floor with Destiny. Destiny, uh, this they spent maybe about five or six minutes, maybe even more, on Destiny explaining what the story was about, what you can do, how you can leave the planet, and, and showing a lot of gameplay. Uh, it looked really exciting to me. Uh, my wife was talking about it the entire time, how much she wants to play it. And yeah, it did. It got me vamped up. I wanted to play that game. It was a lot better than seeing, you know, uh, the... the footage that we've been used to and I was really excited to see it uh, so yeah definitely Destiny is going to be a big seller this year they're spending tons of money on it and I'm sure it's probably going to be one of the best selling games of the year another game that really got me excited as hell is Far Cry 4 now um, Far Cry especially starting with Far, Far Cry 3 has been a top tier AAA title and Far Cry 4 looks to do the same if not better than before because they've implemented this share feature where you can actually invite your friends through PlayStation Network and they don't even have to have the game so if you got a buddy who has Far Cry 4 he's playing the campaign you don't have the game you get a game invite from him you accept the invite and you jump into his game on the fly now if you see this game and saw how it looks you know the tropical setting you got elephants running around and killing enemies it looks phenomenal the particle effects, the flames, everything looked great. And on top of that, you get Troy Baker as the main villain, uh, voicing the villain in this game. So that game really looks exciting to me. I can't wait to play it. And uh, yeah, definitely, Far Cry 4. We saw another game that blew my mind. I'm telling you now, if you saw this trailer and your mind wasn't blown at the visuals, something's wrong with you. The Order 1886 absolutely blew my fucking mind. Uh, when I saw, you know, I can't even describe it. I felt like I was watching a movie. It looked photorealistic, watching the, the player-controlled character walking through the environment. Uh, everything. I was looking at the doors and the windowsills and the walls and the paintings and the chairs. It looked like I was watching an actual movie. And that's when you know you're really there. You're getting there. And then when they... I felt like when this game was first announced in E3 last year that this game was werewolf centric. Something told me it was something like the film Underworld that it had some kind of underlying werewolf theme. And today they solidified my thoughts. They showed this scary ass thing, this man eating a person. Then he got up and looked at the protagonist, started to transform and morph into this werewolf. And it got scary as hell. And, and it looked great. And I couldn't believe that it was actually a game that I was looking at. I'm really excited about the Order 1886 now. I've seen the game before, 
It was, you know, it looked good. Now it looks fucking great. There's very few games I've ever seen in my life that looks that good. There's nothing out right now that I could say looks that good. You know, you can name all the games you want, but Watch Dogs even. None of these games look as good as the, 18, uh, the Order 1886. That game blew my mind. Be sure to check out that trailer from E3 2014 if you haven't seen it, and let me know in the comment section below. They showed some indies too, uh, Bro Force, and they showed like a bevy of, of, of indies, and they all were in the 8-bit uh, graphic style, and uh, they looked really fun, you know. And I know some of these games are out on PC and haven't been, uh, you know, put on console before, so a lot of people are excited for that. Uh, Sony is showing a lot of love to the indie developers, and uh, I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon. Okay, uh, something that kind of caught us off guard in the house and probably caught you off guard because Media Molecule lied and said they were definitely not going to be at E3 2014. They said they were probably going to go to Gamescom. They revealed Little Big Planet 3. And uh, what can I say about this game? I, I own it on Vita, own it on PS3, and it's a family favorite. It's something you, you know, if you, if you want to go back to the days of Mario and, and do something in, in that. Uh, genre of gameplay and expand on it. You go to Little Big Planet, and this Little Big Planet, Little Big Planet 3 looks phenomenal on the PS4. They've added more depth to the level design, so you can actually go forward and back even more than before. It looks really good. There, there are four playable characters, and and the online component of the game allows you to go back and play every online level from the previous two Little Big Planet games. So you can actually go back. I think he said eight million stages have been created you can play on all those maps that have been user generated on little big planet 3 so this is going to be a huge seller it's going to be very fun creating and crafting i want to see just how deep they've gone going past little big planet 2 as far as the things you're able to do in the game and create in the game i think it'll be great it looks fantastic i'm really excited about it battlefield hardline was shown today this game i'm neither here nor there about it it looks interesting it looks it looks graphically just as good as Battlefield 4. Uh, it's a different setting. It's it's cops and robbers type setting. You know, you're a criminal or a police officer, but it is a war zone. You don't feel like it's in the, in the backyard. And you know, there's big set pieces. There are cranes falling and smashing in the building. It's more of what you'd expect. Uh, I think it's not a bad idea. You know, that they're actually taking the war scenario and bringing it closer to home for people to understand and be able to relate to. If you see a police car, you know who it is. If you see a, uh, someone robbing a bank, you know what it is. So, uh, personally, I'm not too excited about this game. There's plenty of first-person shooters out. Battlefield Hardline doesn't look to take full advantage of the PS4 and Xbox One's graphical capabilities. So, until I see more, something that'll get me really excited. Uh, I'm, I'm indifferent for that game. Something that did get me super excited today was Batman Arkham Knight. Now, this game was revealed uh, for the PlayStation 4. They showed actual gameplay footage for the first time. And I think Sony's E3 performance was phenomenal. I, I think that they kind of slowed down when they started talking about the PlayStation Now and uh, PlayStation TV and, and the PlayStation TV show that's coming out powers when they started doing all that I kinda got out of the funk a little bit because they were going hard they were hitting them hitting them knocking them out of the park and then they stopped but with Batman Arkham Knight when I saw that game and you saw Batman put on his suit and go to the edge of his uh, his skyrise apartment slash condo and look at the city it was huge it was amazing it looks gigantic I don't know how much of that you can actually traverse but seeing him traverse it jump off that building skydive down and glide around to the Batmobile, get into that, drive around and pull out the turret out of his Batmobile and turn his Batmobile into a, a moving tank. That game looks insane. It looks ridiculous. You get uh, Scarecrow DLC for PlayStation only. That game is truly next-gen graphically. I can't wait to play it. The whole house is truly excited about it. If you guys saw it, let me know what you think. That Batman Arkham Knight looks sick. That shit is hardcore. Another game that got me super excited was a game called No Man's Sky for PlayStation 4. Now this game was created by the team behind Joe Danger, the uh, little racer, the guy who drives a motorcycle that came out on PS3 and has been out on PSN. So it's a small studio. But this game, No Man's Sky, claims to 
have the ability to have an infinite universe that you can go on forever. Now, the only way I'm thinking they could do that is if it's randomly generated, space is generated as you go, which is a great technological feat. The game looks great. Uh, I didn't know what I was looking at at first. I thought it was like a simulator of another planet. You know, you're taking pictures of other animals, and then all of a sudden he went around the corner, got into a ship, and took off, took off the planet. Uh, and in real time, he left the planet, and then he was in space, and you saw these ships teleporting and coming into to, to view. You're firing on the ships, and you fly and land on another planet in real time. That alone is something that we haven't been able to do before, not, not that I've ever been able to remember. And uh, that really is exciting to me. So No Man's Sky is another game I'm looking forward to. I want to see what they're able to do with it. I think that the the idea is phenomenal, uh, and whether or not they're able to pull it off and make it an engaging, uh, exciting experience, uh, that's something to to watch for. Another game I was really excited to see today was Grand Theft Auto V. Now we know that the game is not out on anything but the 360 and the PS3, but today it was announced for the PlayStation 4. Now when I first saw the announcement and I was looking at the landscape, I didn't know what game it was because it looked so damn good. I thought it was just a new IP. I didn't know what was going on. And then all of a sudden I saw the protagonist and I saw recognizable landmarks and I was like, shit, this is GTA 5. Grand Theft Auto 5 looks phenomenal on the PlayStation 4. It looks sickening how good that game looks. And if you're a GTA 5 fan, I'm pretty sure that you're looking forward to it coming to the PlayStation 4. And one of the things that blew my mind about this news was when you bring it to the PlayStation 4, if you previously owned it on the Xbox 360, or the PS3, you can transfer the data to the PS4. Yes, you heard me right. If you own this game on the 360 and you want to transfer your, your online information to the PS4, that is doable. So, that's sick. Never, I think, in history have we been able to do that with a video game console, especially switching from one generation to the next generation's competition. So, you know, that's awesome news. It's sickening news. Mortal Kombat 10, or X, whatever you guys want to call it, was shown today. Uh, graphically, it looks really good. I was completely, uh, you know, I was taken aback by it. It looked great. Uh, I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan. It makes me feel good to see the old click together. But the thing that kind of got me excited was seeing these new characters. Uh, I didn't catch the name, but there is some new characters. There's a little boy on top of this giant brute and some chick that has tentacles. I mean, it looks great. The game looks fantastic. And, um, uh, what more can you say? It's Mortal Kombat. It's time to get bloody and get visceral and do some fatalities. And it's coming to the PlayStation 4 very soon, so look forward to that. I want to talk about The Last of Us. They showed The Last of Us today on PS4. And it was good and bad to me. I don't know if I'm the only one who felt this way. When I saw The, the Last of Us on PS4, I did not get the sense that it was a PlayStation 4 game. Maybe it's because the PS3 cutscenes were so, done so well that when you see them redone on the PlayStation 4, it's hard to notice. But I really didn't notice it. Um, and I had 20-20 vision. I can see you. Okay? I just didn't notice it. To me, it didn't look that great. I mean, it looked crisp. It looked clean. But for me, I could attribute that to a, a really nice TV. It didn't look. It didn't look like GTA 5 did. GTA 5 actually shown in-game stuff. And so when you show nothing but a cutscene and cutscene and cutscene and cutscene and say, well, this is the game for the next gen, you really don't get that experience. And I think that's kind of what they did with The Last of Us. They showed a whole bunch of different cutscenes. And, of course, the cutscenes are rendered and, you know, the, the characters look great already. And so they might look, they might have a few extra wrinkles or blemishes or age mark, age spots, sunspots on their face. It doesn't matter because you won't be able to tell that much because of the cutscene. I just think that Naughty Dog should have shown more in-game footage so we could actually see the difference of showing them both side by side or something. But nonetheless, I know it's going to look great. Troy Baker was talking about it post-show after E3 about how awesome it looks. I'm really excited about it. comes out next month in July, July 29th, I'm pretty sure. So look forward to that. And they closed with something that I was hoping they would close with. They closed with Uncharted. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, uh, a Thief's End. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Now, this game, when it started, and I was looking at Nathan Drake laying on the ground, my mind didn't want to accept that that was him because how real it looked. It looked like him, but it looked like a real person as he got up and, and, and dusted himself off and got ready to move. And that's the difference between PS3 and PS4. If you haven't seen the trailer, I'm going to have a link in the description for all this stuff for you guys to check it out. 
But uh, Uncharted 4 Thief's End looks like it's going to be amazing. That's all Sony had to do was show Nathan Drake or show something in engine and let him walk off into the sunset to win this thing for me. Uh, like I said, Microsoft had a great show. I have nothing really negative to say about that. I think EA had a great show. I think Ubisoft had a great show. But for me, Sony had the games that kind of hit it out of the park for me. I was really excited to see it. Um, another game that Sony did, that they debuted today was Dead Island 2. And it didn't show any in-game footage. So I can't say that I was really excited about what the prospect of what you could do in the game. But they did show some pretty uh, interesting CG. A CG cutscene of a guy jogging down the streets. Of, it looks like maybe... Florida, and uh, the city was being overrun with zombies, and before you knew it, he was a zombie, and that was pretty exciting, so we'll see what happens with that game in the future, but overall, I'm really excited about what Sony did. Uh, some of the games they didn't show, they did not show The Last Guardian, which I was a little depressed about, because there was a whole debacle about The Last Guardian being canceled, and then all of a sudden, no, we're not canceled, and so I was pretty sure they are going to show it today, but they didn't. So we got to wait for Team Eco to wait until they rub their lamp and the genie comes out and says that we can see that game before we're able to see it. But overall, I give Sony's E3 showing a 9.5 out of 10. It would have been a 10 if they didn't slow down with the Project Morpheus stuff, which they didn't show any of it. They talked about it. They didn't, you know, talk about the PlayStation TV. That slowed it down. Now, the PlayStation Now stuff, I thought that was pretty exciting. I don't have any issue with that. So I'll give them a solid 9.5 for Sony's E3 press conference. You guys let me know what you think about the press conference. Be sure to check out the link in the description. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.